All right, back again. I want to get through these. We're getting there. Let's see. Whenever I bench press, my front delts and triceps do most of the work. My pec development is falling behind. What can I do? Uh, I talked about this a little bit already. What I found really helped me was changing my grip position as well as looking at tucking my elbows in more. Um, you could always try pre-exhaustion techniques. I've really never been a fan of doing that, but a lot of people like that. So try to pre-exhaust your shoulders and triceps a bit as your chest is a bigger muscle and hopefully it'll come through. Um, but experiment with lower weights, different exercises, see what you get that best activation from and go forward with that. Next question, if you found money, would you keep it? Oh, if you found a monkey, I thought this was more of an ethics question. If you found a monkey, would you keep it? Well, it depends what kind of monkey it is. You can see from my other video with the dogs we have now, it's hard for me to even control them. So a monkey, I think, would be even more difficult. For those of you that don't know, I used to live in Japan. I lived in Japan twice, actually, probably for a combined period of around five to six years. One of the interesting things was in Japan, you could actually buy little spider monkeys in pet stores there. And we always used to go and play with them. But I don't think I'd ever want to own one just because I'm sure it would destroy my house and myself. Plus, we don't want to have a Planet of the Apes type experience. So what do you recommend for training for strength and mass, the Lane Norton fat training, or an upper lower split? I think both can be bo both, both can be really effective. What I like about lanes is not only do you have upper and lower days, but you also have um, more specific where you have like a, a push-pull legs type split too. So it's the best of both worlds. You can't go wrong either way, so it's just more a matter of personal preference. One of the things I found with lanes though is it's pretty intensive, so if you're not used to training five times per week and you don't have a lot of free time on your hand, you might be looking better at doing like an upper lower or maybe just a straight push-pull. Um, next question. Let's see, sorry I lost my place here. For refeeds, do you need to drop protein and fat and increase carbs to hit maintenance or do you keep protein and fat the same? So what I like to do for refeeds is I just like to keep everything else constant but I'll typically eat to maintenance or a little bit above simply by adjusting carbs and that's it. So I just like to do carbs, proteins and fats remain the same. Next question, deep squats, odor, parallel squats. I don't really know, odor, maybe other, or. So as far as this goes, I would say use the best range of motion that you can based off your mobility. Don't try to go too far if you're not flexible enough to go too far because you'll end up snapping your shit up. I think as long as you're going parallel at least, you're fine. If you can go deeper, great, do it. You'll get more activation. But again, it's something that you might not be able to do based off structure as well as your mobility itself. Next question, does muscle turn into fat if you stop training? And if so, how long does that take to happen? It doesn't turn into fat. But however, when you stop training, the way I look at things, because I get this question a lot, is your body builds muscle in response to the training you put it through. If you remove that stress or that training, your body has no real incentive to keep that muscle. Your body tries to be as efficient as, poss as possible and it will eventually go away. I think that's the simplest way to put it. I don't want to get too into this because that sounds like a great video topic. LOL, a review on the dogs. I did this in a comment already on the other video, review of the dogs. I guess they're good for companionship if you like them. Cons, they poop a lot and they eat my chair. Pretty, pretty straightforward. What first got you into serious weightlifting, bodybuilding, emphasis on taking it seriously, so like researching, form, nutrition, etc. It's something I've always been interested in. If you saw my video a while ago on how I got into training, initially it was for sports, and I was kind of just doing the beach workouts, which means chest, buys, tries, maybe some back. I took a weight training class in high school where I had to max out in certain things like clean and jerks and deadlifts and squats. However, I didn't really train them. Only when we'd have to do maxes would I do those. I would say I got serious freshman year of college and it was still a lot of bro science to me back then, but I got injured playing basketball in college, which I initially went to college to play. And during that time, I really started learning and doing more and getting into more types of training. And that's when I'd say I started taking it seriously. Does rep range matter while in a cut? As far as in a cut goes, a lot of people ask about training in a cut. Your training should be in line still with what your goals are. So you shouldn't change training to go in a cut. So as far as rep range goes, keep it the same as it was during your bulking. You might have to eventually reduce volume going forward, depending on the length of your cut, but training shouldn't differ too much. Do you currently play any sports? I do not currently play any sports. I had mentioned already I played basketball 
all through high school. Initially, I went to college to play basketball. I got hurt, got more into training. I would still play some ball on the side. I don't currently. I should because it's a great form of exercise, but I'm terrible compared to what I used to be, so it really pisses me off to play now. Next question, how do you change your training routine on a cut, if at all? I just answered this question. I don't train it. I don't change it. I might reduce volume some if need be, but otherwise training should remain largely the same. Uh, this one looks like somebody answered the question previously, so I'm not going to address it. Any advice on knee pain? MRI shows no energy. Energy, I'm sorry, any stretches or exercises? I find a lot of people get injured in the IT band area. This isn't my area of expertise, however, so I guess it depends on where your knee hurts. Um, I don't have any specific stretching I do, but I just try to work on overall mobility. If you can kind of expand on where you're having trouble, maybe I can help point you in the right direction. Next thing, my question is simply to understand cholesterol better. My doc keeps saying 300 milligrams is the magic daily number and one whole leg takes up most of that. I'm only 32, but these things concern me for a future. Any thoughts? So cholesterol is something I want to do a video on more in depth. People always kind of poop on eggs, especially Scooby. Scooby hates eggs and I get this question all the time. How many eggs can you have a day? There's different types of cholesterol out there. Some is very beneficial to you and keeps the other in check. So I'll do a video on this, but really don't stress too much about eggs, especially if you're healthy already. Cholesterol is something I wouldn't stress too much about. And again, I'll try to do a video on this in the future. So sorry if I don't answer that one too thoroughly. Tyler from Team M Shaw asked me, what's with your tattoos? Are they Egyptian or what? No offense at all, I'm fascinated by the ancient Maya and Aztec cultures. So I get tattoo questions all the time. I've neglected to answer them more in depth just because some things I'd like to keep personal and I just haven't felt like answering it yet. Uh, I will tell you that mostly all of them are Egyptian in nature. The only ones not, I would say, are I have some small ones underneath each arm from the time I lived in Japan um, in reference to that. So. I might do a tattoo video at some point. I know I'm definitely going to do some regarding do they stretch and when can you train because I know a lot of people are curious. As far as the explanation of what mine specifically are, maybe someday. No guarantee on that. And I know Tyler, I know you have some, at least one too that I know of. So it'll be a good video for you to do as well, I'm assuming. Next question, please, can you clarify how bad it is to have a cheat day once every second week or so? A second one, if I want to get bigger lats, is pull-up chin-ups the best way. So as far as cheat days go, it really depends on you. Like I said, one day is going to make or break your diet. A lot of times, people find cheat days effective because they're glorified refeed, days, uh, refeed days too. So it's kind of like a refeed day, but it's not controlled at all. So again, as long as you're progressing in the way you like, I don't really have a big issue with that. As far as bigger lats... I don't really like pulls chins as my main lap movement only because I find I get better activation and can use more weights doing other things like bent over rows, things like that. Um, but progressive overload obviously and training in the right rep ranges is, is always beneficial. Jeremy asked, why do women be shopping? I do not know and I don't think anybody knows. I can't answer that question. Seriously though, how to get past the diet plateau? So for dieting, I'm assuming you're going to mean cutting. I think a lot of people, what ends up happening is they cut calories too much. So much in fact that their metabolism kind of slows down a bit. Uh, I've talked a little bit about stuff like leptin in the past, but this is where potentially refeed days or even upping your calories um, could actually be quite beneficial. If I continue eating at maintenance calories and have the best workout routine with enough progressive overload, will I build muscle and lose fat? Again, not very realistic to do that. After shoulder and wrist injury, how long should someone wait to get back into the gym? It depends on the extent, in my opinion. If it's something that's going to hinder your lifting, well, your lifting and not allow you to kind of do what you're capable of, I would say take as long as you need. Um, however, I'm not a doctor. It's always good to get an actual opinion. If it's something that's that serious where it's a chronic injury, you might want to get it checked out. Do you think taking testosterone every month is going to hurt my workouts? I guess it depends what form you're talking. If you're talking about stuff you get over the counter, it's not going to have any benefit to you at all only because it's not going to increase testosterone levels enough to have any kind of anabolic result. What date are you coming to New Jersey on your world tour, Brandon? I haven't been to New Jersey in a while. I actually have family that live in New Jersey right outside of Philadelphia. I haven't been in a while. New Jersey is actually the only place I've ever gotten a speeding ticket as well. I was driving back down to DC one time. Um, so that's going to be to be determined. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? I don't want to get into any poultry and sexual innuendos, so I am going to abstain from that question. 
After doing cardio on the treadmill, are the workout results accurate? As far as caloric burn goes, I would say they're, they're not largely accurate. I don't put a lot of faith in these. Anytime that I try to gain my normal caloric intake numbers, I usually use a calculator that accounts for activity level anyways. It's very hard to get an accurate reading for this. So I just go based off the results on the scale week in and week out and I kind of adjust my own numbers from there. Uh, turkey or chicken is a better food source. Both are great, can't go wrong. Personal preference. Any thoughts on Jason Blaha's Novice 5x5 program? I like Ice Cream Fitness a, a lot. I watch a lot of Jason's videos. I haven't seen the 5x5 program one, so I can't comment on that. I'm sorry. Next question. Train a muscle three times a week. Discard the soreness, a.k.a. train a sore muscle. So I don't think soreness is necessarily an indicator for growth. If you're finding that you're constantly sore, have a lot of DOMS, uh, it might be something where you might want to adjust at the volume or simply work your way into scaling up the volume that you're doing. Nick asks, what's my view on CrossFit? I've already answered this, so I'm going to kind of just skip past that one. Will you ever try intermittent fasting even for a week? I do this sometimes, sometimes um, just because of the way my schedule dictates. Uh, I probably wouldn't go into it full head on based off. There's enough research for me to, to garnish my opinion on it, not to mention I just don't see the need to. I don't see the need to, to do that. The last question, had a couple questions earlier, now I can't remember them. Oh, so Richard Bayer, I'm sorry. And that's where I cut it. I put a post on Facebook just saying that's going to be it for now. So I'm going to cut it here. We'll try to do these again. If I didn't get to your question, sorry, but there was 60 some or so posts. I tried to speed through this as much as possible. My camera's going to cut off.